Here we go. It will be pistol round CEX 1-0 up in the series. Lindor campers, a lot of work that needs to be done. Double flash smoke for poster. Single flash smoke and PT50 for JDD. And there will be a diffuse kit on link over on the CEX side. Oh, utility, ba utility base by with smoke and a uh, incendiary grenade in play. It looks like Lindor campers are going to go for this double smoke setup into the A side. Yeah, and a, a pretty default setup from CEX. I think it's a bit dangerous that they've got this CT start that they really wanted again. Nobody's checking Astro. So much damage to almost the third kill as well. And Hems, they're not checking any of these corners. What a tragedy for indoor campers as they all drop CEX with a beautiful pistol round, not even having to use that defuse kit in the end. No bomb goes down. An easy round for CEX. Why don't... Why, why, why didn't they check the corners? That was bad. Yeah, that was a very poor pistol round from indoor campers. Just didn't check any... Yeah, didn't check sandwich, didn't check ninja spot. <laughs> nothing. And CEX, as a result, just shut them down with headshots galore. Nothing. For everyone on the CEX side. Indoor campers now up for a force by their own. Tech 9s, PT-50s. And LS is already looking to try and shut down this early push in towards the apps area. That grenade. Hey, not going to do as much damage as I was expecting, but still going to be doing damage nonetheless through the indoor campus here. Tech 9s, PT-50s, Kevlar helmets up against SMG's rifles and the, and the uh, standardized buy-up, of course, from CEX. We're just going to get run down right here. Two picks for them at the very least. There's three back for CEX there. We're going to put a two versus four situation. Hemsky's not going to find all the uh, headshots coming in with the USP, and actually, probably will end up falling down. all Rummage to do whatever he can, tapping it down to Link. Oh. Does get one kill, I think, with the Hemsky. That, that's about it. You know, that's 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 all she wrote. One to zero favor of CEX. We're going to two to zero favor of CEX. And the campers once again not start things off on this match on the right foot here. That was an okay round from indoor campers, though. Nice damage onto the CT side and CEX losing their footing a little bit there. I feel like they needed to get those nades off into apps a little bit earlier with the Molotov being slightly delayed, I'd say. However, indoor campers not managing to pick up the round regardless of a couple of little mistakes. They're not, they're not rookie mistakes by any means. However, looking like it's probably going to be CEX to clean up here. Astro doing loads of damage, but not taking too many kills. There's his second as indoor campers. Yeah, they're just going to get mowed down. Four alive for CEX. And that's a pretty clean round. As clean as you can really hope for. Well, not as clean as you can hope for. There's always that fifth man that could stay alive. But yeah, either way, right. either are. way, CEX up 3-0 so far. Indoor campers in with a uh, rifle buy up of their own. AK is out for everybody. No AWP just yet here. And uh, they have AWP Alvaro will be out for CEX. However, Hemsky, take a look. He's going to take that straight in towards the A site. Out towards connector, backed up by Asher. He might just find trying to do his first pick in towards mid. Smokes will be out, so he's not going to have all the angles or vision that he wants. But either way, we'll still be watching out in the case that indoor campers make their way in towards that mid control here. Minute 35 still left on the clock. Spamming their way on through with the uh, uh, bullets out towards that t area. So far, they're actually with Roman that takes down LS straight through the smoke, locks on and traps them down immediately. So, 5 on 4 does ensue indoor campers. They very nice advantage here. So, that first pick does go to their favor. They start to deal with CEX in their format. So, this still could be a bit of an awkward spot for them to be standing. Yeah, and CEX again, after losing a man, they decide to revert back to this buddy system, which I really, really love because it means that you can't get picked off and caught out individually. And I feel like these two players who are playing ramp are going to have a great position to actually neutralize a couple of players. Oh, no, it is, it's a total fake. They're going straight towards this B site with uh, a bit of presence at mid. But indoor campers is really... Um, committed a lot of these, a lot of this utility very early on in the round, with um, 40 seconds left and no push coming in. They've only got two, two smokes left and no Molotovs as well. So this actually could prove a little bit tricky. And CEX haven't over rotated by any stretch of the measure. Hamzek does take one. Razu chips in as well. However, it's even trading, and that's not good enough for this CT side. They need to come in with something and this is going to be a tricky two versus three as indoor campers they've got plenty of time to sit wherever they want and this boost coming in from link is something that can catch a lot of these teams off guard it's something that we don't actually see too often and oh Aww. jt does spot it out what a headshot and wrapping it up with a second one as well that's a quad kill for him in the round and what a way to put his team on the board first round finally for indoor campers 
was an easy road to get here. However, it is a pretty crucial win because take a look at CEX. Their economy isn't quite sitting right. Hamski, we're just up to save here. They are getting some uh, weapons out. CZs, Mag 7s, UMPs, a quasi buy available for CEX. They're trying to defend against indoor campers as full. Still a chance. If Rezu can play this uh, Mag 7 out towards the uh, Apps area and play it well, as well as something like a. Uh, 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 your jumping shots and it could end up working out decently for them. Oh, like look at LS this going so very aggressive. He jumps on through the uh, other side of the window and actually manages to get a little bit of tank damage on Roma, but outside of that, not a whole lot here. Bomb's not committed and Inlock Hammers are still playing passively as they realize that CEX can force by. They're probably going to predict the force by and look for a way to try and shut them down without losing any picks they don't need to. Yeah, this is quite a funny buy from CEX because it's something that we don't often see them go for to even out this money. I'd actually prefer them to not buy any of this. Crap, no, none of these Mag 7s or anything like that. I'd like to just see them go for a, a standard buy in the next one. And giving away Ooh. two rounds isn't actually that much. The Mag 7 doing decent damage onto Roma. However, he's playing very passively. He's held right hunkered back in apps. So, a lot of space to work with. And the Mag 7 is just not effective from that long range. It has been done, known to be able to land yeah, some heads yeah, if has. you can find there, but again, it's kind of random with the buckshot spray. 35 seconds for indoor campers, and then they'll make their way into the site. Finally, Lovely Rezu flash. does fall. Good flash from Cam. LS giving away his position, trying to land that one dude for JD as well. Taps away, double taps him down. A four on four situation, and LCTs will rotate on mass to try and shut down one HP on Roma. And Jadam on 27 as well. Backs that have been coming from both oh, no. This could be shut down. Spots out two. Connects the spray on both of them. And that's going to leave Link alone to clutch or kick. And in this case, it looks like it's going to be kick in a 4v1 situation. I hope they don't kick him because he was a good player in the previous map. And I think they're going to need him going on into this one. However, uh, that was actually looking a little bit dodgy for the, for the T side. They moved into the site very, very slowly. And LS stayed alive for like... 20 seconds more than I anticipated he would. Uh, a clean round in the end for indoor campers, but they only planted with 8 seconds left there. So, letting the clock tick down to the wire. Indeed. 3-2 to two favor of CEX. Indoor campers. Bring back a couple more rounds here. Actually pushing CEX into a bit of an awkward spot here. Two UMPs out for Link in uh, Rezu. Scout for Hemsky as well. And Ellis and Astro are the, the main power players with the two M4s in their favour. Five AKs for indoor campers. No AWP just yet. They haven't quite got the money line sorted out to try and uh, commit to that kind of play. I think in the, in the next round, if they win it, they might have that opportunity available to them. But I'm not going to take too many good risks. not going to try and see if they can uh, force the issue from CX. Just play their default. And try to take map control. But CX are the ones that take a map control. Take a look where Astro's pushed up to. All the way up and towards top mid in Catwalk. Getting all the info on where the indoor campers are playing from. Something that they don't actually do that much. CX prefer a much more passive style of play. But on Mirage, maybe they're thinking that they need to take a couple more risks. And it's obviously not paid off too far. I think they've been quite lucky that they didn't bump into any of the members of indoor campers. However, uh, with a minute left, the T side have got to commit to one of these sites. And it's probably going to be the A site with... The player far pushed up there and everybody rotating on through. And they haven't got tons of nades, but definitely enough to go for an execute. 40 seconds on the clock. Indoor campers are going to make their way in towards executions on the A side. This will be an opportunity available for them. Pommy also going to split his way from middle, it seems like. 20 seconds above, almost 30 coming on through, and here come the double flashes in towards site. Pommy watching out short, takes down LS, but does get tagged up to 15 HP as well. Boaster also dinked down, 29 Link holding down. The ninja spot takes the first, gets traded back by Boaster to the man advantage for the T side, but Astro is still there, fragging away to a three on three. Rezu and Hemsky are trying to frag out towards the CT stairs. Rezu gets one on JD. Astro making his the way clock, from the, the jungle. Clock. The clock's on three seconds, no way! Astro with the key kill on Boaster. Saves the round for his side and Jadam just has to save otherwise go down and get no money into the next round. It will be a fourth round on the board for CEX and indoor campers just ran the clock down way, way, way too low. Yeah, it was something that they did on the B site a couple of rounds ago but this time actually getting burnt by it. 
four to two is CEX. They could definitely start running away with this one now. Is indoors ca indoor campers? If they had even pushed that site with ten seconds more to spare, they could have easily plunged through that that defense, and it could have been a very convincing round. Two round lead for CEX. Indoor campers will still force the issue with the buy here, Big of name. course. Not as big an age nah. as you would expect. This tag's up around 70 HP. Not huge amounts of tag damage in LS. Looked like it was going to do quite a bit more. It, it, it yeah. did, but I don't think it quite landed in, in yeah. entirely on point. You know, he was more out towards the uh, back of the apps and the, and rather than the in-kitchen and out towards the top of the uh, the main corridor. So, 70 HP down on him. LS going to get the info on where he is. No bomb control, though. No bomb information for CX. Indoor campers haven't committed that too heavily. So, this is going to be... Oh, very, very crucial here for the CEX lineup and where indoor campers really want to go pushing them through. They've got standard setups on the CT side. One player rotating in from Sniper Nest, and that's going to be Hemsky holding out with a scout, waiting for a push to come in from B. And actually, it will be coming in with a split with a split as well. One player's covering off connector in case the rotations do come in from mid, but Hemsky is going to try and line them up. Shuts down the instant headshot, peeking off through towards the second, and shuts down Roma as well. It's a 3v5 of Tommy. Has to make his AK frags work. Takes the first down. Evosta comes in with one more kill, but Ellis is able to trade out JDD to a two-on-three situation. Favors CEX, and the other T-side player is held right out towards Catwalk. 20 seconds on the clock. If Tommy goes down, and indeed he will, this round may be all over for oh, the T-side. In fact, Ellis is going to Speed it up with a 3k and an instant 180 flick onto the lone remaining player. It was just perfect play from Hems. He, he obviously landed a bunch of shots, predominantly that headshot on short. However, I feel like it was more the mistakes of the T side. They didn't, they failed to close that distance. They are way too slow and passive in their, in, in, in their pushes, especially onto this B site. We've seen it a couple of times now where they've run the clock really low and just a little afraid to go for these pushes, I feel. And when when you're afraid and going one by one, a orper like Hemzik, even with the scout, is going to rip you apart. This is a very bad spot for indoor campers to be in as well. Three rounds down, pistols out to play. M4s. UMPs and AKs today for CEX. AK for Boaster gets tracked down immediately by LS and Roma, JD, and Echadam are the last three alive for indoor campers. Out towards mid, it looks like they're going to go ahead and rotate in towards B site, try to hit it one more time, but LS is the man of the moment. He's going to line them up. I'm not going to take down a kill, though. Stern Hemsky is going to be there to try and back him up, and we'll take that trade. JD, last man alive, 1v3 situation. Probably going to be one digs or bust for the man at this point. And the CTs are rotating in to try and just shut him down as soon as they can here. JD on site, 45 seconds to go, making his way on through. And there is actually just one <laughs> player out towards the apps here. And Hemsky will take him down. 6-2 to two favor of CEX. And the Swedish player will show up for his team so effectively. Looking like this could be another good CT side for CEX. They've survived the last couple with a bunch of players alive. And with the AWP in the hands of Hemsik as well. He's a monster. We haven't seen too much of Mirage, obviously, in the best of three format now. We're going to see these teams play a much wider range of maps than just the best of ones, where you get three bands. Whereas in in, in the beta for a best of three, you're only obviously going to get one before the enemy team picks. So we're going to be seeing uh, teams like CEX play maps that they're perhaps not as comfortable on. And then we can actually see where they stand in this tournament. And so far, no one's really shown them any any real grunt. Nobody's posed a threat or a challenge to especially their CT side. No campers. AK is out for the entire lineup here. We've got one player, Roma, holding out towards this apps area. Might try to clear the site, might try to sell a fake, and you know, I couldn't that wouldn't be that unviable a strategy actually. One player was rotating back from A side to try and set things up for this Astro held out towards Sniper Nest. Meant that there would have been only one on the site to try and defend it right here. LS still playing cautious, trying to keep the T side at bay. 45 seconds once again. This will be a very quick push in towards the site here, here they go. Pommy spots at the first takedown. Asheran tapping his way on towards stairs. Hemsky going to find that AWP and uh, see if he can get shot off. Flicks on the Pommy and the smoke will be out, so he isn't going to be able to uh, land 
the second phase. Instead, Rezu goes down to the hands of Bosa, shuts him down. Bomb's going to get planted by JD. 3v3 situation, and the bomb plant is out. Indoor campers are going to set up the retake here. Yeah, Rezu didn't actually need to peek through murder hole there. He could have played with his teammates and coordinated that push a little bit better. And they would have had the man advantage coming into this one. However, JDD is going to fire a bit of death from above. Finding the first. Looking for more as well. Staying alive for so long. CX needs a dispatch of him. What a spray down. Takes another one. Almost Link as well. Who's still got two players to find. He has got the kit, but no time left. Got to back the hell out of there. Picks up an AWP as well, but uh, a third on the board for Indoor Campus. That was a beautiful round for them, but a few mistakes from CEX. I think, actually, Rezu going for that engagement a little earlier than he should have. I feel like if he had played with his teammates, they would have had a real good chance in this, in this one. A little bit too far out of time. That's the way Scott Freely holds the AWP for the next round, so Hemsky is going to have that one out to play, and the Force Buy will be available for CEX. Indoor campers still holding a shot here. Still, in, despite the fact that they are three rounds away from CEX, they are still holding face in this matchup here. Five AKs, limited utility, but enough for execution. Barely. Two smokes put on towards the A site. Boast to me while I was going to take down Rezu to start things off. Hemsky going to rotate back in, running up mid control. And it's going to be the push coming on through from the T side. Here's Hemsky watching out across. Oh. Good God, man. Takes down Pommy to a four on four. And now LS will be the man that watches middle from connector. Boaster, the smoke does clear. So now he's going to be pretty damn exposed. But he'll still take down Astro before he loses his life. Hemsky chimes on to the dump. LS tapping away, trying to find a head. And will be able to land it. Now it's all onto the hole. Coming in from Jungle JD. Looking for whatever he can. Ooh. Takes down Hemsky. The AWP is Finally. now out of play. And the bomb needs to go down. It is planted for the triple stack. LS and Lick, the last two alive here. Roma and JDD going to make their way into after plant positions, trying to make their way into the retake here. But they're bang, maybe timid. Other wall bangers may just come through, and JDD going to get tagged up through the danger box. Now, very evens on here. Yeah, health advantages, JDD. Watching out for Link. Link's got to move fast, man. He's got. He's the only one with a few skills. He's got to, have to get these kills or go down. And in fact, he will get one before JD trades him out. Uh -huh. LS! Good God, man. Through the box. Knows exactly where to frag. And he will take the frag as well. 7-3. Favour of the CEX lineup. That might be a round that we look back on. There are so many little niche little things that went on there. Hemsick is such a threat wherever he goes. We've seen him every single time playing... The, the AWPer towards, well, 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 towards Ace in, on, on CT spawn. That, in, in that occasion, he was mid. But he's so dominant. Wherever he goes, he's always going to pick up the one or two kills. And you see, as soon as he knows that there's a third man towards mid, he jumps straight down there. He got the kill stolen away from the player on short anyway. However, he's always in the position to find a frag. He knows his star power. And again, he's fragging at almost a, a, a 2kd. He is absolutely dominant here in this matchup. He's been doing just absolutely insane. Now, his AWP skills. We were told about this before going into this land. Those flicks as well in the yeah. previous two rounds are crazy, right? He is nutty. He is a nutty player. And CEX, man, they've got some real good comp with him in there. Seven of three in this matchup. Match pause, of course, coming in. Need to... Uh, Take a moment for the indoor campers to think about this one. I imagine it would be tactical because CX are about to win yeah. the half. And indoor campers, once again, showing us signs of life, showing us uh, opportunities available, but not really getting themselves into any uh, um, uh, any winnable positions here. They found themselves a few rounds, but CEX, when they find their groove, when they find their uh, the spring in their step, they shut them down every single time. I think time. that that's actually a, a really good point to make. When CEX are feeling comfortable, <coughs> they... <coughs> get everything rolling, especially um, on the CT side. Yeah, on the T side, they can get rolling as well. But I feel like they really find their form and get momentum on these on these CT sides. We saw it yesterday in multiple of their matches, and we're seeing it again today in both maps of this best of three. When they're feeling confident, I don't know if there's any team here that can actually step up to that level and bring a similar a similar flow to their game. And our campers are going to have to deal with all this and more at this point. CEX seem like they've got their strategy on lock here. When they're ready, they'll make their way into uh, 
Also, just after losing a round like that, Indoor Campers, uh, who did have the advantage running all the way through until that clutch from Astro, you need to take a deep breath. And they are going for, for, for a force by this time. I don't actually agree with this at all. However, they do need like a, a short break, a couple of minutes, just to talk about their strats, because they can't afford another 11 for half, Jay. No, definitely not. You know, this map hangs in the balance for indoor campers. And this match hangs in this map. Need to take a victory. Need to take a 2-1. to one. Need to take one map here if they want to go to map 3. So, lots to play for for the T side. CEX still in decent positions. And it looks like they're going to set themselves up for a B rush down here. LS and Rezu ready to shut it out. Rotations will get called in as well. Then we we'll expect this right here. It's going to be a quick push coming from Indoor Campus and Rezu and LS looks to clean things up. Rezu takes down two. Astro comes in, takes down one from Short, but Rezu's running wild. Jadam does trade out, but Astro's there for the wide peak and takes the head off as well. Eight to three, favour of CEX. So, based off that strat, what do you reckon they talked about in their timeout? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have not the damnest clue. They just did the same thing again. They just walked right into. Uh, CX's crosshair. They didn't throw any real smokes down. They didn't have um, a smoke to uh, allow the exit onto the B site. They didn't close up the distance by any means. They just ran into the firing range one by one. I, I don't know quite what they discussed there, but it certainly didn't work or pan out like they wanted it to. I feel like CX might just be on a, a different level here. And. We, we were talking about this potentially being a close game. I think CEX have shown us the tenure and the and, and just the overall team coordination to be able to shut down a mix like indoor campers. Well, this round is going to be nothing more than the mop-up from the CEX lineup. Pistols, no Kevlar, no utility, no opportunities for JD and Boaster. Close to falls as well. That's going to get covered by his own teammates. So, bomb gets dropped as well. That is going to be 9 to 3, favor of CEX. And these guys are just outperforming each other in, you know, outperforming the other in an absolutely ridiculous fashion at this point. Indoor campus really not finding any real opportunities. This is the last one they might have for this half. AK buy up will be up to four round loss bonus. Max loss maybe for the end of the round, for the end of the half, for round number 15. But outside of that, this is basically going to be Indoor Camper's last chance in this in this half. Well, all of this success from CEX poses another problem for Indoor Campers. Is the CT economy is booming right now. They're not going to be forced to eco even if they lose the next couple of rounds. And CEX deciding to get aggressive on mid. Boaster not spotting that one out. Pommy does do one kill's worth of damage, but traded straight out by Astro. This team communication is so, so strong, and you can see it every time. And like every time indoor campers chips back, CEX knows exactly where the refrag's coming from. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to mention this. You know, they just seem to rotate the perfect positions to get the trades back and keep themselves in the man advantage. So Dam, however, is still fragging. He's still holding a face. And he's taking down Lick. Astro will be there to try and take his face. Emski on the cross from Jungle. Gets a little bit of spray through the smoke, but outside of that, not much more than that. But the bomb's been dropped. Look at where it is. This is a huge <laughs> mistake from Indoor Campers. How do you do this? JD now has to try and win off frags. Takes down Hemsky. Astro on site. He's going to spot them out. No, the smoke's are out. The smoke wall is out, so they weren't going to be able to find it. In this case, they pulled the rotation, and they may just try and hold down and hold up Connector. Try and get the bomb over towards the B site instead, more likely than anything else. 35 seconds, making their way back into T-Spawn. And running the rounds back into the A site here. This is a bit they're of a misplay, a bit of this coordination. They they're might. very close. They're going to hear them now. Yeah, they're going to rotate back in from top mid. 20 seconds. All I have to do is drop JD in, and that's going to be it right here. And Astro with the man that tries to do the job. 15 seconds on the clock. They'll cross. They'll spot the first. And JD's down. So now, Jadam has got 10 seconds to pop the bomb. Molotov's down. That might be it. LS going to stop it from going. No, Jadam's still going to be planting. So there's still a chance for indoor campers. No, he no. unsticks it. Three seconds. No chance to hell. None time left. And Astro will take the last with a P250. I think the pressure might be hitting this T side. They made some monumental mistakes there, making too much noise in T spawn, which is one that they couldn't have actually known. However, crossing on the A side, they had such an easy plant. And they could have just sat up in Palace, waited the CTs out, and they, they could have had a very easy bomb plant. What's the advantage of going to, uh, to Triple Box? 
Yeah, that's uh, uh, a lot of mistakes. Uh, big mistakes. Well. Yeah. This is the small things that are getting punished by CEX. This is a huge thing. They got access to the A site. They left a bomb out towards top mid. No one picked it up. And from there, it was all just... Well, this is a really, really weak showing from them as well. I know we bigged them up to um, maybe be a little bit better than they are, but... Yeah, as we've said, it's mistakes all the way through. And CEX obviously feeling confident, breaking from their ways and getting much more aggressive. And Astro with a beautiful headshot there. Probably going to finish this round and half off in a, in a few moments. Yeah, I've got one more round left. However, Boaster and JD with Deagles, likely absolutely nothing that they can do. Tap some heads, but that'll be about it. Bomb on Boaster. And he is on a site here. Still holding his teammate. I don't know what JD is doing at the moment, but they seem to be waiting for <laughs> maybe a split. I mean, he's going up towards apps. This is There odd. seems to be no game plan from the indoor camper side. If you actually break down each of these rounds, it, it's pretty pointless doing any sort of real analysis to this game when it just seems so random. And look at JD. His position's been given away anyway. There are five players in light, and, well... What a stomp. At the very least, Indoor Campers got themselves a bomb plant, but I don't know what they were trying there. I don't know what JD was trying to do. Trying Eventually. to set up a split into the site. I mean, they already had one player having access, and why not just come back from T-Sport and just, you know, just get onto the site, get a bomb plant and secure it. And then maybe take a few rifles away from CEX, because that just basically got you the bomb plant, the bonus buy-up, and that's about it, you know? And yeah, it is the last round of the half, so I guess that's all you really needed, but... CEX, you know, need to, they need to find a way to tilt CEX a lot off, off, off of it. Don't think that's going to gonna happen. Um, uh, oh, here's the thing, right? They're, they're very impassionate about the game, you know, and it's going to be very, very difficult. But if you can do it, like, they, these guys are cool as are cool as ice. They really are. They are cool, cool as a cucumber. No, cool as ice is better. Oh. <laughs> cool as ice, you know. They, 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 they have their game plan down. I was watching them yesterday when they were in the land hall. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they, they, they have their team calmed down, and indoor campers need to try and break that. Like, CEX are so confident going into these matches, and indoor campers just seem like they're not. They have no game plan. They have no real chance back into this one. So now, round number 15, 12 to 3 is what CEX are looking for. 11 to 4, another half. That's gone so disastrous to Young for the T side. They need to try and find some frags. Point X down, Astro to 4 versus 4. Roma on 17. Oh, sorry, 11 HP. Now they're going to try something to get the bomb down. AWP cross from Hemsky. Second phase shuts down the bomb. And a minute to go. He's got full control of this round. It looks like it's going to be all over because his flicks will not miss a second time. LS watching out with a second orb from the other side. Spots that Pommy shuts him down. Jadam 1v4. AK in his hand. This is not only looking tough, but practically impossible for him. And it will be the 12th to 3 to the favor of the CEX side. It's so frustrating watching these guys play. They seem very broken up. They don't seem like a proper team at all. I just, both of these T sides, what, what, what's this been? Seven rounds in, in two maps on, 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 on the T side? I'm not really sure if we're seeing um, an upper bracket team, and I don't think they're going to be an upper bracket team for a lot longer. Is CEX on the verge of a 2 0 here? Looking very, very strong, though. They've shown no real cracks this whole series, and it's just been plain sailing for them, and they've got to close it out on the T side once more. Indoor campers a come back, needs to be mounted, and it needs to be mounted right now and right here. With these USPs, could be done. Boaster does find one. Need some more damage though. His teammates are going to chip in and do some of their own. Have a look. CEX taking so much map control. Dealing the, <laughs> the damage to each other as well. However, with the USP picked up and a lot of map control gained for CEX. They've just got to hit a couple of headshots and get this bomb down. But it's going to be JD instead to pinch the head off of Hemsky. And Astro... Being the last player alive in that bomb drop, surely nothing he can do here. Jadam just needs to hit one more bullet, but he's actually going to get mullered, destroyed by Astro, who is looking to do more and more damage as he approaches this A site. He has got the bomb in his hand. However, needs to actually connect with some headshots now, and he's not going to do it. Pommy instead coming in with the taps and indoor campers with a much-needed pistol round. Yeah, needed to win that one. Else that would have been all over for them, I think. That would have been 15 to 4, 15 to 3, and then the rifle round for basically 12 rounds in a row for the guys over on the CT side. Yeah. So that would have been impossible to win, me thinks. 
And as well as that, they didn't even allow CX to get a bomb plant. So it's all down to this uh, this uh, like little force play that they've got down here. The Deagles have to land, else they'll be done and dusted. Boaster taps on Rezu, takes him out of the action. So a great start, of course, from the CT side. Bomb's not committed. CX got themselves some angles and something to work with. They just need to land these shots with their Deagles, and that's about it. But Bomb not going to commit. They're not going to go for a quick rush. They're not going to go for a quick hit onto a site. And we'll see how well they pull this one together. Yeah, looking good from indoor campers. They just need to not get aggressive, play passively with a little bit of patience and wait for these Deagles to come in, which is going to happen. LS going down as these rifles and UMPs, might I add, are proving to be far more powerful. CEX probably not going to be able to do anything this round. I'd, I'd actually prefer them to just go for a double eco and play this off of gun rounds. I don't know. Do you agree with that? Uh, maybe. I don't know. So these are just conversion rounds at the moment. I feel like it's probably the best thing to stick to that meta. Just force buy and then go for the eco. Go for the rifle buy up afterwards. Maybe just look for a bomb plant at best during these next couple of rounds. Because at the moment, it's not going to be looking too great for them. Uh, in terms of like you know actually winning a victory round just to find those picks. Deagles, sure they're Deagles. But they are up against SMGs and rifles galore. So indoor campers have a much better opportunity available for them. CEX, however, going to go up for that pick star play. Going to get picked apart one by one. Leave Link alone in an 11 HP situation. Both knows exactly where he is. And we'll just try to see if we can shut down that final attack. But there it is. Both takes him down. It will be 12 to 5 favour of CEX so far. So if indoor campers need to or, or want to get back in this series, right now they've got to mount a really big comeback. And that's got to be off the back of getting this economy rolling, having a big buffer to work with, maybe having a, an AWP or a double AWP set up. But as we said before, they don't have a really strong AWP. Well, they certainly don't have anybody to the standard of CEX. Even, uh, well, Hemsey and um, we've seen other players be able to pick it up at certain points as well. If this nade's going to do a lot of damage. Oh. Yeah, big damage onto Link, but he's got absolutely no armor. Has to back off. And CEX probably just going to walk into this grinder. I don't know why. I, I'm sorry, I, I think that Link, what he did was um, uh, uh, he body blocked the grenades. We didn't go back to hit his teammates towards the back of the app. So he basically absorbed all the damage, allowing CEX a chance what when a they push on through. But, but playing for the better of the team. Wolf, one for all, for one. Rezu. Now just trying to play a lurk, but for the rest of them, they're just going to get ripped apart by Roma. Easy 3k for him. For a 4k against Hemsky. He's got a 1v5 situation. Might be able to get a bomb plant. Flag's coming back. UMP in his hands. Boaster with a Famas. Waiting, watching. Shuts him down. Six rounds will be on the board for indoor campers. Yeah, but this is the interesting round as CEX going to have a proper buy up here. Hems not affording that AWP, which he's really dangerous with on this uh, on on the T side. It's actually a, a little bit of a shame that we've um, that they've actually stormed all the way through this series because we never actually got to see them play T side and we never got to see that aggressive orping. That he's actually pretty well known for now. Maybe later on in the tournament, you know, we have yeah. still got to see the... I mean, more than likely CEX will be, if, if they end up taking this one, they'll probably more than likely be in the finals. That's my prediction. At the very least, the top four, lower consolidation or grand finals. But we'll find out. 12-6. to 6. AKs. That SSG out for Hamski as well. And Boaster M4. Sorry, Boaster for Mars. M4 is out for everybody else on the T uh, CT side. Except for Pommy, who's also got himself a UMP. And AKs will try look for the mid control for the CEX side. All the players kind of spread out amongst the map. Most seen towards mid control. One player in the apps area. Bomb. Not on LS, but he can pick it up very quickly and try to see if they can formulate some sort of push CEX. They've got mid control, so they've got options available to them. A minute to go. Boaster spots out one with the aggression on Rezu. And Rezu doesn't even see it coming now. It's one man down already for CEX. Hemsky. Looking for a chance, looking for a way back in. He knows that this player is holding out aggression on this uh, 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 apps area. Astro takes down JD as well. Back to a 4-on-4 four four situation with 40 seconds to go. All Indoor campers have got to be so, so careful now. They can't let CEX take another entry kill. Otherwise, they're going to be right onto one of these bomb sites in Roma. That flash could have done a lot more there. If it was just an inch further in, he would have been totally flashed and more than likely completely dead. <laughs> There's another flash, but spray straight through it regardless. Takes his second of the round and CEX. Their win has been delayed slightly. 
quite a bit. Yeah, 2v4. In fact, the bomb's out towards Zaps and Astro and Link have six seconds to wrap back around, plant it, and set up the retake. Got to run through two CTs to do it as well. They know exactly where they stand. They stand in the each other's spawn. arms, apparently. Yeah, they stand in each other's arms uh, in the T-spawn, waiting to uh, save their rifles into the next round. Indeed, they will be able to do so. Force Black could be brought around this, but it will be very, very difficult. I think Rezu is going to go for that Technon coming out for him. Well, this is a funny time to buy. I'm not sure I quite agree with this. I would like to see CX possibly go for that AWP setup, but instead it's going to be a scrappy buy with a couple of AKs followed with three pistols, and it's going to be a very hard, heavy A site taken. Indoor Campers doesn't have a great setup to actually deal with this unless they can get a couple of men on this site very, very quickly before any nades go down, but CX haven't really invested in 20, so it's going to be brute firepower and link opening up this site with two headshots that's exactly what they needed and indoor campers in a really tricky position now they have to get back into this site it's a 3v3 and cex been able to pick up a couple of rifles ls with no armor is stuck in a really tricky position he's got to be hitting headshots galore if he wants to take this and all members of indoor campers have kits so they can afford to take this one a little slower however with jaden and roman Ooh. oh Christ, wrapping up all the kills. It's going to be a nice eighth round and a very coordinated retake. They seem a lot more structured on their CT side. Well, indoor campers now up to their max loss bonus. CEX can buy up here, but a pause will come through from, I assume, the CEX lineup. Try that money's actually can, uh, great. They've got tons of money. They can buy straight back up into this despite forcing. I didn't realize it was a quasi to actually even up the money. But you see, 7,000. CX have so much money, and now this is the round that we need to be watching. Whether they're probably going to go for that A setup once more. Now they've sniffed out the defense. They kind of know where the weakness is. However, I felt like if CX wanted to take a round early, that would have been their opportunity off the back of two gorgeous headshots from Link. You know, I think CX's main objective in that last round was to try and set their money up for the buy-up in this round. AK for Astro, Link, Hemsky, Ellis, and Rezu yet to buy. Paul's probably going to come in so they can decide really what they want to do at this point. They need to uh, take a tactical to slow things down. Because indoor campers, this comeback isn't that far out of the realms of possibility now. 12 yeah, to 8, it's four rounds between them yeah. right here. And CX have another buy-up here to uh, uh, get themselves into the uh, match once again. AWP potential for LS might drop it out to Hemze. Oh, Hemsky, sorry. I keep saying that. Hemsky. Everyone, everyone's saying it. It's, a, it's already a long day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's mate, it was a long night. It, it was a long night, mate. It was, we, we had one too many drinks. Yeah. Or I had two too many drinks, actually. I should have stopped a lot earlier, but <laughs> when you get offered a free drink, how'd you turn it down, right? Exactly. Welcome to Epic Land. I hope you enjoy your stay. If you're from Front Page, you should just buy tickets and just come here and... Literally uh, buy tickets. This is <laughs> an amazing land. Buy tickets, come here, drink, play games. Bring, maybe. bring your PC as well. Uh, that, that is the BYOC that is the point. event. Of course, that is, that is the, point. the point. Yeah. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> 12 to 8. <laughs> favor of CEX. They're going to buy in double orb setup. So, Hemsky oh, and LS are both going to buy on through with the AWPs for either side here. Limited utility for them, but however, the other three players have themselves full sets and the uh, execution potential is on the board for the T side. Single orb out for JD over on indoor campers. AK is recovered, M4 is brought up. This is a decent round coming in from both sides, particularly for CEX. This is the first time we're going to be seeing these AWPs come out from this uh, T side. So you were talking a couple of rounds ago how we weren't able to see the incredible aggressive orb of Hemsky. This could be the chance. He's taking it straight in towards Apps. It looks like he's going to try to take that first peek and pick onto this truck. Yeah, they're taking these orbs different sides of the map as well. This could definitely catch indoor campers out because now they've heard the orb rain oh. through. Oh, they are going to peek it as well. I think that that was actually a clever bait from CEX to let the, let the CT side know that there was an orb towards it. A, not expecting the double up setup, so the B uh, the B push could actually be a, a little more aggressive from the CT, so they could actually get a bit of damage through or potentially a kill. That that could have actually definitely been been an opening pick for CEX, and I feel like that was actually planned in, in some respect. Sadly, in this case, Hemsky's not going to find the uh, full shot. Just a leg onto JD. 40 HP, and his AWP will wrap back around in towards A site to try and defend it. Good opportunities could be opened up here for either side. 
Mid to go for CEX, though. They have got the both of the AWPs just watching out for whatever they can. And Roma might actually go in for the push and towards apps. A risky play considering what they know about the AWPs, but still a risk that they'd want to try to take for information. They're going to stack their way in towards the A site. Rezu, first man in, spots out the first on JD. The small top out to try and flush him out, but takes a spray and actually shuts down the AWP. Nicely played. Now, smokes, flashbangs, they're all going to make their way on towards site. Just to take down anybody who is here and is pomming out towards the firebox. That does get shot down. No smoke out towards the crossbow. It doesn't matter because no one is in a connector. No one is watching out the angles on the site. Boaster, however, holding face out towards the bowels and ticket booth. 25 seconds now. CS, uh, uh, CEX need to go in and plant this bomb eventually. They're down a man. So but look at your damn. Oh my god. His position's so good. He's going to take one oh, fight, but not the not second. Enough. The AWP flips right back around. Rezu gets one as well. And a very, very close matchup. A very close round there. But Romo can still shut it down. Not going to happen. Oh. Astro. He's able to get the trade as the bomb planter does fall after the bomb gets planted. Indoor Campus had so many opportunities to do some really decent damage. Starting with uh, Jadam, pushed straight back. He saw the side of three separate players, but only managed to get one. Whiffing a bit there. I feel that, like the pressure could definitely be hitting him here. They're not going for this um, double up setup again. It's just Hemzik, who is... Pushing towards A, and it's going to take a pop shot through that smoke. Quite close, actually, but not connecting with a shot this time. And this is something about Hemsick. Like, every single time, he's very unpredictable on the T side as well as to where he's going to go. He plays very much so off of the spawn he gets, so he can be quickly onto one of these sites. But I wonder if this is going to be a, a fake from CEX with all the nades coming down into the A site. A rotate hasn't actually been forced off yet, and indoor campers are staying very, very strong. And this, yeah, this could actually be a, a, a double fake. I want to talk about that tactic in a moment, but Pommy needs a couple more than just that one. Rezu desperately wanted to connect to this height shot, and he's missing, missing. Finally hits it, and this leaves the A site very exposed. CEX needs to get this bomb down sometime soon, but Link is going to almost finish it off. Jdamp needs a huge play now. Going to catch one in the back. A second as well. Going to be a third. But no. Link finally finds it. Wow. CEX just clinging on there. <laughs> that was... Wow. A close, a close shot from Jadam as well. That's two rounds in a row. He's had an opportunity to shut down CEX and whiffed it. He's been gifted quite a few nice positions, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, but this is not working out for them at all now. Indoor campers... Losing the last couple of rounds of CEX and one more here would put CEX right at match, but not even match point, series point here for the indoor camp. It was after CX, that. Ta right? It was after that tactical pause though. CEX's tactical pause came in. They talked. They reconsidered their tactics, and they've been going for this a hit every single time. And now, yeah, as you said, another eco from indoor campus. The first one this whole half, and CEX just playing with them now. Going to be match point here and. Indoor campers are going to need seven in a row to force overtime. I can't see that one happen. Yeah, it's going to be very, very difficult. This is a very similar situation that we've seen yesterday, I think. Not between these two teams, but it is a situation that we find ourselves a lot here at LAN. Bottom goes down on B site. Pommy with an AK to his favor. We might try to see if he can catch Rezu off guard, which could be a kill. He's going towards the favor of indoor campers, but this retake does not seem like it is going to be on for him here. As he gets caught off, Pommy goes down. And now him and JD are the last two alive. Kevlar helmet on Pommy. JD's got nothing except his P250 to work with. Might try for an exit frag, but indoor campers are pretty much going to have to be playing for overtime. The bomb's too far. Tick, there is no defuse kit on the CT side. So 15 to 8, favor of CEX. Indoor campers. Oh, JD. Oh, no. He's actually going to be able to pick up this AWP as well and get the hell out of there, Link. He's actually facing him. Didn't need to do oh, that. Oh, no. dice to the bomb due to having no armor. Very, very close. I would like to just see him back out, <laughs> out of window. He'd have been able to survive with that AWP. Yeah, well, not to be the case today. He does go down, so the AWP does not get saved into the next round. There's only the AK on Pommy. And he's going to go dropping it for... I was going to go dropping him for his teammates. Indoor campers, full investment needs to come through, and they need to find... The uh, round right here, else this one is done and dusted. CEX will move on to the semi finals of the upper bracket right here. Lincoln LS trying to frag their way on through. Link takes that first kill, but he back one onto Hemsky. He's holding face. Roman gets one blow off. He's going to burn you down. LS gets Pommy. It's a three versus two. CEX and a huge advantage right here to take the series, to take the matchup, to go forward here. Planted for the danger box. 
and Boaster and Roma. The last two alive for indoor campers is safe. Three AKs to deal with. Flashbang is through. Both doesn't catch any of it, but he still loses out the Angel. And now it's all Roma. 1v3. Spots out the first. Doesn't know where the second or third is. And in fact, he's going to creep straight into the clutches of Link. Who shuts him down? It's going to be 16 to 8. To the favour of CEX. They win out the series.